Hey YouTube, welcome back to Get Wrenching. I'm your host Murray. What are we doing today? Well, we're going to continue on with our cylinder head rebuild. I'm going to show you how to take seats and valves from, from this mess to this. So sit back, relax, grab yourself a sandwich and a beverage, and we're tearing into this. So this is not going to be a tutorial on how to do this. This is how I did it. I know there's several different methods out there. I'm not saying one's wrong than the other. This is the method I prefer because this is more of a budget friendly method. And I've used this in the past on two other engines and it's worked fine. So the products that you're going to need to complete this job, you're going to need a portable lathe, AKA cordless drill or corded drill, plus lots of batteries. Also, Green and red scotch Bright. these come in different grits. I find these two the safest on a valve. Also, some WD-40, brake clean, a container to put a little bit of diesel or Varsol into, valve lapping tool, valve lapping compound, and the softest wire wheel that you can find. Either the softest steel or preferably brass if your budget allows. So, let's get digging. So, YouTube, as you can see that pitting inside here on the seats, and how, like, the exhaust valve is kind of crappy looking, versus to what th this intake valve, this exhaust valve, and their corresponding seats. Now, this is, uh, it does take some time. It's not one of those five minute processes that it's just going to be instant and those things are clean. That's not the way it works with this, but this is cheap, easy. I know your time isn't free, but instead of going to the machine shop and spending a bunch of money, you can try this first. This is what I'm doing because, well, my budget, I'm telling you, is it's stretched thin as it can get. After this, this will be a little bit for the engines. It'll probably be a couple of weeks before I can do anything again onto them. But, you know, whatever. Uh, also, too, guys and gals, I'm going to get this little rant out of the way now. If you like what you see, please subscribe. And a like would be nice. And if you really like what you see, please share. It's free to subscribe. It's free to share. It's free to like. And comment down below how you guys and gals do this. Maybe you do it different. Maybe I'm doing it wrong. Let me know. I'd really love your input. Okay, YouTube, before we get started, I just want to show you this. This is what I normally do. I take the valve out. So like when I'm working, say, on that one, I can have these ones in soak. So if it takes me like 15, 20 minutes, they're in here. And what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to soften off all that baked on carb and then i'm about ready to show you how i clean it off so yeah that's a i usually use diesel or you can use uh varisol or some people like to soak it in wd or whatever kind of chemical you got but i always find diesel fuel and varisol is the easiest and cheapest and the cleanest okay youtube what we're going to do here now we're going to try to get rid of all this black crap this is carb and that's burnt on left over by unburnt fuel, crappy fuel, oil deposits, what have you. So what are we going to do? We're going to take this, slide it into the drill. And I usually just like to put it on to where the keepers go and just give it a click. 
just like that. That's all you need. Then take your green scotch brake pad, hug it around said valve like so, and go easy. You don't need to go crazy. Just the intake. The intakes I find don't take very long to clean up. Sometimes you might have to speed up a little. Don't go crazy. Already, you can see a difference in this already. Like that's that's just what thirty seconds of that. So, yeah, not too bad. Now, mind you, too, you're going to go through probably a lot of these, and don't just put the whole, I know it's just, you know, grab that and stuff the whole thing on, rip off little pieces like this. I find it's much easier to work with, and, you know, it will uh, do the job. Okay, YouTube, I've been at this now for about five minutes or so. You can see there's a big difference already. We've still got some black here in the corner, so I'm going to take a pick. Just give that a little scrape in there. Then I'm going to dunk it in here, let it drip off, leave the residual diesel on there, and then try to clean it with the green pad. So I'll bring you back and I'll show you what that looks like. So you two, what I mean by scrape inside of there, I mean take a little pick like this and just go in there. Don't turn the drill on. Keep your fingers away from the drill. Actually take the damn valve right out of there. And then just go around and just, you're just loosening it. That's all you're doing. So now let's dunk it in there. I got this all scraped. Give her a little, just enough to get it wet. Just let it drip off. Grab your green scotch bright pad. Nice and easy again. Voila. So about, about seven minutes. So guys and gals, YouTube land, you can get this valve grinding compound at any, basically any, any like auto part store. I don't know about like Canadian tire or anything like that. I imagine they would have it or yeah. Well, any, any automotive store should hold this stuff. So here's the directions. Apply a liberal coating of Permatex. Well, right off the get go, I'm going to go conservative on that one, but that's a tale for another time. So, I apply a liberal coating of Permatex valve grinding compound to the valve. Grind usual manner, clean valve seat with damp cloth, weight thoroughly with dry cloth to thin compound, add a few drops of oil. Well, you don't need to do that. So, what I usually do too is I'll take a screwdriver or a pick. A clean one go in here and stir this all up because this has got grease in it and it'll usually be floating here at the top so you want to mix it up real thorough before you even start so youtube what i like to do is just dip my finger into the into the valve grinding compound one there one there try to go across from one another might have to dip your finger in a little bit again i don't like using too too much of this because you got to take your time and recheck to make sure how your progress is going so once that's done move my cylinder head tool here then I get my finger down behind here because we don't want to drop on the seat get that down in there like so wait my finger off take your valve lapping tool which has got a little suction cup make sure that's nice and clean and then just press firmly down like oh don't slip off the side there come on come on that's probably already suction but i just want to make sure hard on the intake valve because you've got like a little indentation i want to try to get it square 
so that way I get a good even lap. There we are, like so. Then take your hand. Oh, okay. Now we got our squeeze down there. Now take your hand, and you should hear this. That's normal. So I usually do that for like that. Pick it up, turn the valve a little bit. Do it again. Pick it up, turn it down. 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 And you can do this for a good five minutes, but I usually like to do this for about a minute. And then check my progress. Because you don't want to go too much. The further the valve down in the head it is, the worse that it is for your performance. And we don't want that. We're sort of, we're trying to do a little budget performance here. Then I'll pull it out. Always put your finger on the stem when you're pulling that out, guys and gals. Because that doesn't stay on there that great. So then I take a rag. Weight the valve off. And I weight the seat as well because I got to make sure that I'm getting all the marks out of that seat. And also, I don't want to have a buildup of lap and compound on there. So, let's see what we got here. Oh, let's see if we can get her to focus here. There. You can see that light gray. That's why I like cleaning these up really good. So that way you can see that. Yeah, it's not too bad. How's the seat looking? Let's see. We can zoom in there. Get a light on that. Well, got a couple still little pits there, but they're coming out like they're disappearing. They're getting fainter. And I see a one pit there, one pit there, and I had quite a few into it. Hmm. Not too bad. Well, I'll get at this. Maybe I might set you up for a little time lapse. Do some more lap and I'll bring you back in. I'll show you what this valve looks like when it's complete. YouTube. Oh, you can pick that up there. There you are. See how nice that is? That nice solid gray. You can see like a well, almost like chrome on the outsides. This is what you want to see. That nice dull gray. It, I don't know if it'll focus enough. It's trying to focus on me here. Yeah, that's that's what the finish valve looks like. Let's see what the seat looks like. And as you can see. Up there in that top corner, that's where all the pitting was, gone. So, so that just goes to show you, that taught me about four minutes. I was seven minutes cleaning this, four minutes to lap it. That is easy, to me, that is easy, 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 easy. So, what I'm going to do now, is I'm probably going to go in the house, get something to eat, because it is dinner time, come back out, rip through these valves, come back, have a little discussion about this. And I'll let you know some little tips and tricks on little performance gains that you can do if you want, if you want to take the risk. But I am not that risk taker because I don't have that money in case something happens. So let's get at this. Okay, YouTube. This is the same cylinder I'm working on. This is the exhaust valve. 
when you see these pits in there i've noticed this on all of the exhaust valves that i've been doing so far so i'll get to putting some on some laughing compound and then we'll do another close up believe it or not this didn't take me very long to clean this only took me about maybe two minutes of sanding so i'll get some lap compound on there and i'll bring it back and show you what it looks like after we get it done okay youtube there's that exhaust valve for number three you've seen how it was before well there it is now about five minutes of lapping you can see there's a couple little dings in there i don't think it'll be enough to hurt what we're doing it looks pretty good so I'll continue on from here, and if I find any more out of bed, I'll show you. Okay, YouTube, I got that driver's side cylinder head done. Here we are. Looks really nice, eh? Don't mind this fella here. He heard something about a 100 shot of nitrous or something. He got a little worried. But we got a couple problems. This one here, I'll take these two valves out and show you. And this one, we got maybe a problem. Okay, YouTube, I got all the valves popped out for you. So we'll start off here at number seven. I did a little, quite a bit of lapping just to get this little mark out right here. And it did come out, so we'll try it with the water test, see if it passes or not. But if it doesn't, then this seat may need some machine work. Cylinder number five, the intake valve, did not want to lap in that area. You can see where it's gray there, all the way around. Then you get back and then it's shiny again, almost like it's warped or bent. But the sad part is there isn't even a factory mark on that. It looks like brand new. This cylinder wasn't too bad. It had a couple pits in the seats, got them out, no problem at all. That actually took me probably about maybe 15 minutes to do this whole cylinder. And this was the first one that I did, and that took me really no time compared to the rest. So this is why I'm doing this before we go to the machine shop, because if I need any of the seats looked at, I want to be able to get it done now and taken care of and bit in the butt right away, so that way I don't have to run all the way back to Bridgewater or Armstrong's in the valley, wherever it is going to be, because either one is an hour away or two hours away. Gas is expensive. All I have is a pickup truck and a Jeep that's left it, so gas prices are a little high right now so yeah so i'm going to get on to the driver's side and i'll bring you back and i'll show you if i got any troubles with those okay youtube almost forgot to show you what i needed that wire wheel for so where your valve keepers go on here i like to take said wire wheel and clean this up inside the grooves so that way the keepers can lock on really good so i used to just do this very very lightly Don't seem like lately, but it is. This drill is quite powerful. Just roll it around like so. Don't have to go aggressive. Let's see if you focus there. Come on, camera. There we are. Hey, just, just like new. Okay, YouTube. Got all these out of the cylinder head for you, just so you can see the seats. Number four, yeah, not so good on the seat here. That was the one that's really, uh, I hope I lapped a long time on that one. Hopefully, hopefully, this shares the EGR, so I don't know if that got chewed up from heat, carbon build up. I don't know, but they don't look good. We'll have to see on the water test what happens there. Uh, number six looks like the oh, wrong one, looks like the. Something got into that valve. Oh, well. It's an old car. Old 85 cylinder head. Whatever. It's to be expected. But the rest of them turned out pretty good. Now, guys and gals of YouTube land, that cylinder head took me longer than it did the driver's side. You're going to run into this. Not every cylinder head is great. Not all of them are just going to be easy just to lap a valve in and that's it and away you go. I'm doing this before I take the machine shop, just in case if I need some work done to the seats. So, also, I was going to tell you a couple little trips, a uh, little uh, tongue-tied here today. 
I was going to tell you some tips and tricks on a little bit of horsepower gains you can do on this. Well, we're going to say that for the next video because I got to water test all these valves and we're getting to the point now where we're like 20 minutes, 30 minute long video. I find they don't do so good. So that's going to conclude it for me here today, guys and gals, YouTube land. If you're following along, make sure you're subscribed, make sure you like, make sure you share and you comment down below. And if you do this stuff for a living or you just do this for fun, just remember, stay safe, get wrenching. See you next time.